This video explains how to create interactive plots using the Plotly package in the R programming language. The tutorial was created in collaboration with Kirby White, who is a researcher at the Seattle Pacific University and an expert when it comes to interactive graphics in R. So without too much talk, I'll hand it over to Kirby. Hey everybody, Kirby White here to do a quick tutorial on an introduction to the Plotly graphing package in the R programming language. We are gonna walk through a few examples of Plotly graphs and how to create them. And I mostly want to use those examples in order to demonstrate the reasons why you might wanna use Plotly instead of another graphing package that's more common like ggplot or something like that. So let's go ahead and jump in. And the Plotly package you can install with this line of code. Uh, I've already installed it, so I'm not going to run it, but we are going to activate the Plotly library um, in R. Once it's installed, you can go ahead and use this code to do that. And the example data that we're going to use in this video comes from the data sets package, which is already preloaded in R, so you already have access to this data set. I'm going to store it in an object called DF, which is traditionally short for just data frame. And then what I want to do is take the row names from that and, and um, uh, from that data and save it as a new column that I'm just going to call name. So DF dollar sign name is going to equal the row names from that package in the first place. And we can go ahead and take a quick look at it just so you understand what data we're working with. This is a sample data set that, like I said, came with R and it just has a variety of information about different vehicles. Uh, so we've got the miles per gallon, how many cylinders it has, the uh, displacement in cubic centimeters for the engine horsepower, so on and so forth. We're not going to use most of these columns, but this just gives you an idea of uh, what we're working with. Here are the row names that came with it and all we did was store it in this new column here called name so that we can access it as if it's a traditional column in the data set. So that's the example data that we're going to be working with. Go ahead and replicate this code if you want to follow along. And the first plot that we're going to build is just a basic scatter plot. And so what we do is we call the plotly function and this is a part of the plotly package. Um, and you can see that it's got an underscore in it here. So plot underscore ly. This is how we say create a new graph for me. We don't need to specify the plotly package uh, unless there's uh, function conflicts or you want to be really specific with somebody else about what package this function is coming from. And what we do is we specify that we are bringing in data from the DF data frame. And what we do to specify the x-axis is really simply give the x argument uh, the value of cylinder or CYL, which is the a column in that data set. And we use this tilde. This is on a traditional keyboard. Um, it's the, the character just to the left of the number one key. And if you hold shift and hit that key, this is called a tilde in here. And what this does is it tells um, Plotly that we're going to map the x values to that column. So we're essentially saying from the data set DF, we're going to map X to the column cylinder that's in this data set. If you had a vector and not a data frame, that's okay. You went, you just don't need to use this tilde. So if CYL was its own um, uh, R object somewhere, you could just call it as is and, and ignore the tilde. So we've got our X value here of cylinder, our Y of displacement. And then what we do is we specify the type. This is where we say uh, what kind of graph we want Plotly to create for us. And a scatter plot is going to give us a bunch of dots along the X and Y axis. And let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So here we go in the viewer. You can now see that we have a scatter plot with cylinder along our X axis and displacement along our Y axis. And here is what makes Plotly, this is probably the biggest, most obvious advantage to Plotly. You can hover over the points and get information about it. This is called hover info or sometimes a tool tip. And so I can hover over each point and see more precisely what its displacement is. All of these ones here are in uh, six cylinders, so that doesn't change, but I can see that this top one has 258 displacement, this one has 167.6, so on and so forth. Another thing that makes Plotly great is you can zoom in. So if I click and drag a rectangle, I can zoom in on these points here and ignore everything else on the plot. So this is much more interactive than what you're going to be able to get with something like ggplot. 
We also have these buttons along the top here that really allow the user to change the way that they interact with the data. So I, I've zoomed in here, but now let's say I wanna zoom back. I can just click this auto scale button to reset the axes and, and zoom back out to see the entire um, plot. You can zoom in and out manually using these buttons and then drag around um, using the pan feature. And you can also save an image. So if I zoom in on, on uh, these points again, sorry. If I zoom in on those points, now I can download the plot as an image, file a PNG, and it will save that view of the image uh, to my computer so that I could send it to somebody else without them needing to open R or interact with the data or anything like that. Another fun thing that's not really relevant um, or probably not very useful with this type of chart, but you can turn on these spike lines, which when you hover over a point, just emphasize that um, that data's position on the X and Y axis like this. It can make it more easy to compare across multiple values. So you can just turn that on and off with things like that. So those are the main benefits to using Plotly at all. Now, the interactive nature of it does mean that it takes a little bit more computer resources to build the graph and to interact with it. So if you have a very slow computer or you're doing lots and lots of plotting, you might need to think carefully about how to do this in Plotly so that you don't uh, slow down your computer too much. The other thing that matters is uh, you should really only use this in an environment where the interactivity helps the user, whoever's gonna be looking at the plot and digesting the data. So if you're hosting it to an online website and you want users to be able to log on and explore the data on their own, interactivity is a great feature for it. If you're creating a plot that you're gonna print in a textbook, users can't interact with it, so why bother spending the time or computer resources to use Plotly when ggplot will export a perfectly good, high quality um, static image. So those are some of the things to consider as you're wondering when to use Plotly and when to use something else. Plotly also has a lot more complex um, features, which can mean you can, it, it, there's, it's a very powerful graphing library and you can do um, essentially anything you want to with, uh, with your plots in it, but it can be more difficult to learn. For a simple graph like this, this is actually probably easier than ggplot to set up just in terms of the, um, you know, maybe the number of characters that it takes to build it. Um, but um, Plotly has a lot more advanced features that we're not going to talk about in this video, but other tutorials might get more into. So let's rebuild this same data. Um, so this is identical to what we did above, but I'm gonna change type to box, and we're gonna, we're gonna display the same data as a box plot instead of a scatter plot. And of course, we can see uh, the same thing with the interactivity and the hover info. It pops up and, and uses little flags to point out what different areas of the box mean. So it's pointing out what the median is, the 25th and 75th percentile, the minimum and maximum, things like that. It's all able to point that out and, uh, and allow users to interact with that to get more information. If we want to change the color of each box, which isn't very useful for this particular data set, but is a very common need, we can rebuild it and add this argument color. And we just map it to the same column that we used earlier, cylinder, where we say, change the color of each box to, um, this doesn't quite look right to me, um, but uh, you can see the, the code for it here where you just uh, take, a, take a column in your data set and map it to the color um, feature. Okay, I figured out what it was. I accidentally was still using cylinder as if it was a numeric. Uh, data and instead I've wrapped it in this factor function so that it is displaying them as categorical data so it's treating like four as a group rather than something numeric. Um, now of course four is a number but um, uh, it's a different data type. We're not treating it as a number here. So now you can see uh, that we have just different uh, categorical colors for each of our boxes which can help in interpretation of the data that you're displaying. This final thing that I want to show you in this video is a little bit of a modification to the um, tooltip or the hover info. We've added a, a text argument here and gone back to a scatter plot. 
and we've been mapped the text argument to the name column, which of course you'll remember from our data preview contains the name of each vehicle that's being represented. So now when we hover over this plot, we can see uh, both the X and Y axis values like we did before, but also the name of that vehicle uh, in that tooltip information underneath. And this again makes it so easy to, to uh, to create a graph that you can glance at and get some high level inferences, but also allow the user to zoom in and get more information about each data point on demand as they decide what information is going to be useful to, to them in that moment. So that wraps up this tutorial. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks a lot once again to Kirby White for his contribution to this video. In case you want to learn more about the topics that Kirby has explained in this video, you may check out the Statistics Globe homepage, because on this homepage Kirby has recently published a written tutorial in which he's explaining the R programming code that he has shown in this video in some more detail. In case you have liked this video, we would be very happy if you leave us some positive feedback in the comments and make sure to subscribe to the Statistics Globe YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases on the channel. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See you next time.